time and this data. Now, this data on page two, or the back side of the worksheet, is kind of what we did last time. It's a replication of what we did last time. And the scenario on this data is as follows. Uh, Sarah is an intern at the local bank. And Matthew is her boss. And Matthew said, boy, Sarah, we're really glad that you're here. Appreciate you having this opportunity. You'll do great. You know, we're going to try to expose you a lot of different areas of the bank. But Matthew says, but your first and major responsibility is to make sure the ATM machine is filled up every day. So whatever you do, when you come in, you got to go out and make sure the ATM machine is filled up. Now, you fill up the ATM machine. I don't want you to put $100,000 in there because that's just going to expose and make you know, a lot of money vulnerable. And there's no real reason to do that. But on the other hand, you better have enough money in there so that 2 o'clock in the afternoon, people are not coming into Matthew's desk yelling at him, how come the ATM machine is empty? Does that make sense? So there's kind of a situation here where uh, Sarah needs to figure out how much to put in and not expose unnecessary a lot of money, you waste a lot of time, put a lot of money in the ATM machine that's not going to be withdrawn, but on the other hand, you really don't want to alienate a lot of customers. That makes sense? So you've got to find a number that is going to accommodate both of those demands. So Sarah, in her infinite wisdom, okay, having taken statistics before, she says, well, I'm going to take a random sample of 30 days over the last year and I'm going to look at the withdrawals for 30 days. Now, that snapshot hopefully is going to give me a picture of the whole year. Now, actually, in today's day and age, it takes a whole year because computers are fast. And, you know, but just bear with me because we're going to do this as a problem in class. So she takes a snapshot of 30 days of the last year. And these are the daily withdrawals in hundreds of dollars on the 30 days that she's randomly selected that hopefully give us a picture of kind of what the behavior is. And so this first number, 72, would be $7,200, okay, on that particular day. 104 would be $10,400, okay? And now she's got to figure out, we've got to figure out whether, okay, what the distribution looks like and how much money she should put in every morning to make sure that both of the needs are accommodated, which is not too much, but not too so, uh, and what I asked you to do was figure out the boundaries, the frequency, take a look at what the histogram looks like. So let's go ahead and you guys tell me what you figured out. I said, I, I think I suggested on the back sheet that we're going to use um, five classes, right? There should be five classes. So if you figured out with five classes, what are our boundaries? Lower boundary, the upper boundary. The lowest, not yet. Is it higher? Yeah. Ring them off? Yeah. So what's the lower boundary? 60.5. 60.5. Absolutely right. Okay. 60.5. And the upper boundary of that first debt class goes to what? 69.5. 69.5. Okay. 69.5. Okay. For those of you who are not only caught up. So where Tyler, how'd you get that? Where did that come from? Well, you gotta start by determining the range. You know, which is the maximum and minimum. That was forty-three. Then since you're gonna have uh, five classes, you divide that and round it up so that way you don't miss any of your numbers. So the class width is gonna be what? Nine. 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 Right? Forty-three divided by five is eight point six on so round up. To nine. Okay. How many people do not have a worksheet? I think I brought just a couple. Maybe yes. Maybe you want. So you got one. This needs one. Right behind it. Okay. Kelsey. 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 Kelsey.
Yeah. What? Do you have an extra one? I have a couple extra ones. Okay. I will start charging you next time. Ten dollars a worksheet, which would be for a great party at the end of the semester. Okay, so what are the rest of the boundaries? Now we go 60.5 60, 60 to 69.5. What's the next one? Tyler, you're on a roll. Go ahead. 69.5, 78.5, 78.5, 79.5. So those are the classes, right? And those are the boundaries, okay? And so, you know, every piece of data that we have has a home. If you actually looked at the frequencies, which is the number of days that fell into each of those classes, Sarah's really interested in this. What is it, Sarah? What's the frequencies? Okay, so what's the frequencies? How much of each piece, how many, oh, Not. Here's the data, right? I got 30 pieces of data. How much, what's the frequency of the data that fell into this class, this one, this one, this one, and this one? Anybody other than Tyler have that? Oh, the back row is wide awake tonight. Okay, Dorota, what's the, what's the frequencies? The first one is two. Two. The second one is eight. Eight. The third one is 13. 13. Four. Four. And three. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now, if I draw, I draw, you've got some grid paper there that help, but if I draw a very bad histogram, I put my broken symbol there, 60.5, let's see, then uh, one, two, three, four, I need a little more space here, five, this is 105. Point five. And of course, these are 69, this is uh, 78, this is 86, this is 90, or 96, 87. And it looks like this. Let's say uh, that goes up to 2. What did you tell me? 8? Eight? 8, 13, 4, 13, 8. So that's what it should look like, right? That's what our distribution of the data looks like. That makes sense, everybody? Everybody okay? Kind of like what we did last time. But you should also have the midpoints filled in because we're going to use them later. Uh, relative frequency, you can do that. And cumulative, you figured out from last time. But that's what our data should look like. So Sarah now has some idea of how the data is distributed. Sarah, how much money do you think you ought to put in the ATM machine each morning based on that picture. Oh, good. That's even better. I know. Like, I know how much each of these are. I mean, I can put the rest of the boundaries here, but this is 69. This is. How much? Somewhere between 78.5 and 87. So, so this is this is the 78.5. This is the 87.5. So somewhere in here is what Sarah says, right? Okay. She puts uh, let's put it right in the middle. Let's put um, I don't know 8,300 dollars right right in the middle or something like that. How many days is she going to miss? Well, anything that's above here, right? Well, she's going to be off. She's going to close out on all those days. That makes sense to everybody? In other words, she's going to run out of money if you put that much in. Because we've already seen over a 30-day period, we have, you know, I don't know, half of these and then the rest of these. So she's going to run out of money 15 days out of the 30. You're fired. Or you're fired from the, 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 the mythical internship. Why, 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 why would I put... 
No, not 30 days, every day. I'm saying you're going to pull it up every day, every morning. And we have observations of how much money people have taken out every day, and those are these observations, right? Okay, never mind. I didn't say one. Okay. No, no, this is, let's say, every morning. We'll go out and make sure it's at a certain level every morning. I don't know, let's say 6 o'clock in the morning or something before the day starts. And we know that there's observations that say there are certain days where people took out, or right here, $9,100, $9,100 during that 24-hour period of time. So if you put that much money in, you're going to have a lot of days that are not satisfied, aren't you? So what's a better guess? Tyler? Well, something over here, right? Something over here that says we don't have a lot of observations where people actually had that high a total that was taken out of the bank, OK? So the picture helps us uh, certainly a little bit because we get a sense of maybe where we ought to make that decision, what the threshold is. All right, so that's where we ought to be today. Um, Let's flip over to the front page, page one of the worksheet, which is talking about something called measures of central tendency. 